Welcome back, everybody. Derek Sue, your East Oakland advocate. We're here in the kitchen cooking for St. Patrick's Day. What are we cooking? Corned beef. And so I've been uh, cooking this for a couple of hours right now. And I want to, some people say, well, how can you tell when it's cooked? And well, the package says three to four hours. Well, that's a general guideline. And also, uh, you shouldn't take that uh, too seriously. It's okay, Mama. I'm just checking dinner. So she's also concerned about dinner, too. So, because she gets some of this and she loves this. And, and this is part of that special I, I talked about the other day for $1.69 a pound. And I bought 10 pounds of it. So I still got two, two more in the freezer. <clears throat> but. For those of you who have not cooked corned beef very much, one of the easiest ways to um, tell if it's cooked, good old fork. And what we're going to do, we're just going to poke it into the meat. Uh, this has been cooking for about a little over two hours right now. And, and so it should be starting to soften up. And what I'm looking for is when I pick the fork up here, when I pick this up, just like that, the meat should slide off the fork. See, it's not ready yet. The center still needs a lot of cooking because uh, it's not soft yet. Uh, if you were to try and uh, take it out right now, it would be pretty tough. It would be pretty rubbery. And so uh, we're going to put... Put this uh, continue cooking this for another hour that'll get us up to the third hour and then we're going to come back do the same thing poke the fork in there and see if the meat slides off that fork when the meat slides off the fork that's when you want to take it out of uh, the water put it aside let it cool down and then slice it we'll, we'll get to that shortly we'll be right back Okay, we are at the three hour mark now, and uh, we're going to do another test with the fork and see if this uh, slides off. So, what we're going to do is it's floating, so it should be doing pretty good right here. I'm going to poke this in, and still needs a little bit more, but it's just starting to slide off. You see that? It is just starting to slide off. So it's pretty close. Probably another 15 minutes uh, would be, uh, it'll be right where I like it to be because I want it to just slide off of uh, the fork. Okay, it's been 15 minutes, so we're going to switch this off and we're going to pull this out. It should have uh, cooked enough right now. We're going to do the the test poke with the fork and so we're just going to stab it right into the thickest part oh yeah that's ready when it slides off like that that's soft enough to cook see how it's nicely coming off there so that is cooked so that is my tip of the day on how to properly cook corned beef and so we're going to set it aside let this cool and it'll solidify <clears throat> and right now what you want to do <clears throat> with the water don't throw it away what you want to do if you're going to do cabbage this is the time to uh, put it in the broth here the uh, <clears throat> corned beef broth and then also potato maybe some onions and if you're like me, I have a sensitivity to cabbage, <laughs> bok choy. Bok choy is in uh, the cabbage family, and it's uh, it goes well, uh, much better with my system uh, than the standard head cabbage. So if you have a sensitivity to uh, head cabbage, the standard head cabbage, try this. Bok choy. This is baby bok choy here, and it's really inexpensive, and, and you can use it 
a lot more with a lot more dishes than a head cabbage. But uh, this is a good substitute if you have sensitivity to uh, cabbage like I do. Okay, this is the moment of truth. Um, this is now rested for 15 minutes. And what I want to do is start cutting this. So it's cooled off. As you can see, I can pick it up by, by hand. And one of the mistakes that a lot of people make is just find a, a straight side and just start cutting straight down. Well, that's how you get really tough meat. And how, how you get really tender meat is by cutting diagonally. So what we're going to do, we're going to start cutting pieces diagonally, just like that. And we want to cut them thin. You don't want these big old heavy chunks. Because the chunkier it gets, the more chewy it gets. So I like to stay within, oh, 3 sixteenths, eighth, 3 sixteenths, no more than a quarter. Uh, some people like the big, chunky, thick pieces, kind of like that, <laughs> yeah. or thicker, uh, half inch. <clears throat> Those get really chewy. And when you straight cut them, they get even chewier. When you cut them diagonally like this, you get nice, tender, uh, almost like a deli. And, and, the, and see how, how thin I can cut that? And, and that's because I have a sharp knife, and, and that's important also. But a, a perfectly cut corned beef, look at how thin I can cut that. That is, that is thin. That is perfectly cut, or perfectly cooked, I should say, and also perfectly cut. And, and that's how you get a really good, corned beef sandwich that's tender, practically melts in your mouth. So hopefully that gives you some uh, cooking tips for today for uh, uh, the special. Again, if you have a sensitive stomach like I do uh, to cabbage, <coughs> bok choy is a good uh, choice. Uh, I spe uh, specifically like to use the baby bok choy. So once again, baby bok choy. <coughs> then you can throw in the whole onion and potato into the broth. Cook it for, an, for about half hour uh, or less. You may not even need to cook it that long, but the bok choy should be the last thing to go in. Potato first thing to go in, the, uh, then the uh, onion about 10-15 minutes later, and then finally in the last five minutes, the bok choy. And that should do it. Hey, happy St. Paddy's Day to everybody, and luck of the Irish.